Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the standard Murakumo build. Sorry, it's a little late. I know AL4 just dropped. Um, I was kind of rushing and getting some situations uh, handled. If you guys are aware of the situation on my second channel, I've kind of been dealing a lot with that. Um, so, again, yeah, sorry for the delay on this video. I know I got all the rest of the AL4 videos out, but not this one which was one a lot of people wanted to see. Um, so we're doing it now. Uh, better late than never, right? So, um, yeah, let's talk about the uh, Murakumo build. And uh, I don't think I have an, any announcements besides that. I think the schedule for this channel is going to be the same exact as my other channel. Um, unless I decide to change it or make it different, or different, I will let you guys know. Um, I think that will mean that this channel will be getting a video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to tune into the channel those days to expect a video from me, and then also, um, this video will probably be coming today on Tuesday, um, October 23rd, um, but this will be for tomorrow's video. Um, so don't expect a video tomorrow, expect a video Friday. But uh, with that being said, um, I don't think I have any more announcements. do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, uh, Dabbers Cards and Games. Uh, they have they are a local card shop in uh, Georgia. They have a lot of awesome employees, and they are really really helpful and cool people to handle and deal with. In comparison to some card stores you could go to, um, they have a good card selection for Card Fight Vanguard around the time when sets come out, and they have a lot of cool Japanese merchandise as well that you can purchase from there. And they have video games that you can play um, in there, like Dragon Ball Fighters, Smash Brothers, all that good stuff. Um, can be found inside their store if you're visiting Atlanta or you reside in Atlanta area um, Go check them out for sure if you love to card game But anyways with that being said, uh, let's get right into the build that we're talking about today So we are talking about standard Murakumo just like I said There's gonna be no G zone because of course this is standard, but you guys know that already uh, So let's get right into it. So for our grade threes we run 10 grade threes. I know that's a big number um, maybe not for some of you because some of you like running high amounts of grade threes in Excel decks. I usually like running nine grade threes in Excel decks, uh, but I think that this deck personally can get away with it just because they do so much calling from the deck. It's really just like once you get to grade three and you're thinning your deck out with all the skills, like it, you really don't draw that many grade threes and your hand doesn't get as clunky as you would think with ten grade threes in your deck. Um, and also because you use some of them on the rear guard circle. Cough, cough, Musashi. Um, but yeah, let's talk about our first and main ride, Grade 3, which is Dueling Dragon Zombaku. This is a remake of an old card, but it does something very different from the old card, um, as it has the manga ability. So it has an activation Vanguard once per turn skill that says Counter Boss 1 and Soul Blast 1. Uh, search your deck for up to one card with a Rester in its card name and call it to the rear guard circle. You shuffle your deck and this unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. And then if you have a right Rester and a left Rester on your rear guard circle, your opponent cannot ride a grade 3 or greater from a grade 3 on his or her next ride phase. So what this means is that um, if you go first and your opponent's grade 2 when you ride this card, um, usually I prefer not to ride into this card on the turn. If I have the choice to go into Mandala Lord, I will. Um, but uh, if you go Zombaku first turn your opponent's at grade 2, you can't use the skill to stun their vanguard or, or sorry, like prevent them from riding. So you uh, usually I do just use the skill just to get an arrestor out. Whether I want to put that arrestor in my front row or in my back row, it kind of depends on how my hand's looking like. I don't always want to place an arrestor in the front row in case it gets attacked by my opponent or sniped off by my opponent. If I'm playing against Kagro, doesn't matter anyways, I just put it wherever. Um, because they could most likely snipe it off with a skill or an attack So you can just kind of put it in the front row to put some pressure on them and uh, some attack pressure But um, otherwise than this uh, this card skill combines great with both of the arresters specifically right arrestor skill um, Which we will get into that a little later, but when you use the combo um, Use those two skills in unison it allows you to lock down your opponent for a single turn which in standard um, is really, really, really uh, cutthroat, I guess I would say. I was going to say something else, but <laughs> yeah, it's really, really hurtful uh, to lock down your opponent for a single turn and have them not get any advantage from their Vanguard drive checks 
um, or their Vanguard's attack because they have a lot of skills in standard that is when your Vanguard attacks do this. So um, I know in Kagura you can avoid Waterfall with this tactic, you can avoid uh, Dragonic Overlord, you can avoid, you know, um, I don't know, Imperial Daughter by Imperial Daughter not being able to reride. Um, you can avoid the new Pale Moon um, Golden Beast Tamer um, skill. So you can avoid a lot of things, and it's really good to just lock your opponent down for a turn, especially since you're an Excel clan and you can kind of push for um, you can kind of push for game during those uh, two turns that you have. The first turn where you stun them, and then the second turn is after when they haven't been able to attack you. So moving on to our next grade 3, we have 4 uh, Covert Demonic Dragon Mandala Lord. So Mandala Lord is a great backup to Zambaku, really just gets in there and does the job whenever you can't do Zambaku uh, shenanigans. So it has two skills, um, the first one is when placed, Counterbox 1 and Soul Blast 1, choose uh, uh, two of your units. And you search your deck for up to one card with each card name as the units that you chose. Call them to separate rear guard circles and uh, shuffle your deck. Um, so it allows you to just get a free plus two as long as you have a pre-existing at least one rear guard. Because you can select Mandala Lord himself. So if you have one rear guard you can select the rear guard and Mandala Lord and get two copies of them on the field. So it's just a plus two for nothing. Just really really good. Um, and then the second skill is put a card in, uh, from your hand into or from your hand into your soul and then all your units with the same card name as this unit so all the card units named mandala lord get plus three thousand power so <coughs> excuse me guys i don't think that mandala lord's second skill is ever worth doing i think it's definitely more worth doing in a mandala lord focused deck but this is not what that is so we purely just run mandala lord to get the copies of things when we ride <laughs> So then we run for our next grade three, we run two Twin Swordsman Musashi. Now this card is actually my favorite card in the entire deck, um, just because it forces so much out of your opponent, and look, look at the art, it's so cool, it's like a samurai guy um, with two flaming swords, but um, he has a skill to match his really cool artwork that is just as powerful. <coughs> it is Vanguard Rearguard, um, when it attacks. If you have more rear guards than your opponent, until the end of the battle, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. And then when your opponent calls guardians from their hand, he or she must call two or more at the same time. Meaning that your opponent cannot just one card guard this card. <coughs> so if they have a heal in their hand or something like that, it, it actually forces amounts of cards out of their hand, which is really good. Because in standard, so this is just about running through your opponent's hand, um, and then you practically win the game in standard. Uh, so, you want to use Musashi to force out as much as you can. This card is obviously best when they're at 5 damage, because then they can't just take the hit and then hit a trigger or something like that. Um, but yeah, definitely really, really useful. Moving on to our grade 2s, we have 4 Swift Archer Fushimi. So, Fushimi has uh, 2 Vanguard Rigor skills. First is a Continuous, second is an Auto ability. The first Continuous ability says. During your turn, if you have four more rear guards, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. So it can attack force clans by itself without a booster, which is really, really good. Uh, big reason that we use it. And then the second ability is when placed, choose one of your units and it can attack a back row unit. So it actually allows you to place a grade one in the front row. And then you can place Fushimi um, either in the front row or in a cell circle front row. And then you can choose that grade one that is most likely 8k and it can attack a back row, which their back row is most likely 8k or lower. So, very, very, very good. Uh, now let's talk about both of our resters. That we were talking about their synergy with uh, actual Zombaku. But, left arrestor skill is when it attacks a vanguard. If you have another rearguard with a rester in its card name, then you can soul blast one and this unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the battle. Again, another card that can hit force by itself as long as you soul blast and you have another arrestor on the board. Uh, very, very valuable. Especially when you can just play right arrestor on the Excel circle since it gained no power, and then left arrestor on a non Excel circle. Um, then we have three right arrestor, and right arrestor skill is when it's placed. If your Vanguard is dueling Dragon Zombaku and you have another rearguard with a arrestor in its name, you can counterblast two and put a card from your hand into your soul, and then uh, choose one of your opponent's Vanguards, and that unit cannot stand. So I um, usually like doing the really big combo play where you have a left arrestor out already on the field or you play one from your hand and then you use dueling dragons on baku 
to counter boss one, soul boss one, and call a right arrester. Um, when you call the right arrester, you'll be able to lock your opponent down um, from all plays that they might be able to do. Um, and then that like pretty much gives you a turn to fight your opponent on a even standpoint. Um, but then we have, starting with our grade one, we have four cornered stealth rogue uh, Benishi. Benishi? Benishi? Um, but its rear guard skill is, uh, this card actually I figured out was a promo, um, after I built this deck and tried it and play tested all of it and stuff. So, uh, you can pretty much replace this card with any grade one that you personally like in, like, the Murakumo, like, standard stuff that came out. Um, but it doesn't really matter to me just because this card is way better than all of the Murakumo grade ones that we currently have, in my opinion. Um, but its rear guard skill is when your opponent's sentinel is placed on guard circle during the battle that um, your opponent's vanguard attacked um, Then you can return a normal unit from your drop zone to your deck and then search your deck for one card With the same name as your vanguard call it to rear guard shuffle your deck So what this means is that your opponent it either puts them in an awkward situation Where they can never PG your vanguard or if they PG your vanguard There's gonna be like consequences for them and those consequences are gonna be more attacks um, on their vanguard because you're going to be able to like put cards back um, not only is the first consequence like letting you put cards back because you're able to like recycle musashis and stuff like that um, but you also get to call out versions of your vanguard onto excel circles that have already finished their attack so when you have these on the field depending on how many you have is those circles you want to attack with first um, and then uh, our next grade one is four stealth beast million rat so million rat um, has an activation skill on rear guard circle says if you do not have another stealth beast um, million rat on your rear guard circle, you can counter boss one, um, search your deck for one million rat, call it your rear guard circle, shuffle your deck, and it gets minus 4k power. So this is mainly our early game skill, um, something that I'll do to like ride and then you know call a million rat, or, like call another one as the call the 4k one as the booster for your vanguard, or you can just call it out onto the other rear guard circle and then play a booster for that million rat. So. This card's really, really good in the early game in combination with uh, the next grade one that we're going to talk about, which is uh, Shinji Maru, because this card works off of same name cards. So um, when this unit boosts, two of your units with the same card name as the boosted unit, that the unit that you're boosting, gets plus 3,000 power until the end of the turn. So what that means is that you're able to attack with Shinji Maru, and then give, uh, if it's boosting million rat, you're able to give two million rats 3k which kind of like negates the 4k a little bit, uh, just makes it minus 1k instead, which is obviously a lot better than it being 4k um, rather than it being 7k. Um, but your starter for the deck is Stealth Beast Cat Devil, not much to say about that. Uh, typical standard starter lets you draw a card when you ride upon it. Um, for our triggers, we run six front triggers, six draw triggers, four draw PGs, of course, and then um, four V-Series heal. Um, not much to say there, pretty classic lineup. Uh, we do run stand triggers, uh, or sorry, not stand triggers, ha, got em. Um, we do run front triggers in this deck, uh, because I think that when you're, like, when you're putting pressure on your opponent, especially during the two turns where you can, like, do the lockdown turn, um, front triggers just seem to be a lot better. Um, but I have seen people run crits, uh, it's kind of just up to personal preference. Um, I also like how they defend your rear guards, like, if your opponent attacks a vanguard to vanguard first and then you check a front trigger, like all your rear guards in the front row get power, so sometimes that makes your opponent just end their turn because they're not big enough to hit your rear guards or your vanguard. Um, so really, really good. And the draw triggers are so that we can get our pieces off. But with that being said, let's get into just a couple of the games here. So we're going to open back up our card fight area. Yes. Alright, so... Our card fighter is taking super long. Okay, there it is. Alright, so let's go through game one um, and kind of talk about what I think. So, Murakumo, game one. Um, so we're playing against Royal Paladin in the first game. Uh, we get a decent hand, we don't have a Zambaku, so not bad, but not great. Um, we start off pretty normal, our opponent attacks us 
they don't get a trigger, we don't get a trigger. Uh, we do get a draw trigger on, upon our ride to grade two, and we're starting off with a little bit of an early rush playing down the field. Um, our opponent rides Blaster Blade and kind of boss one, Soul Boss one to get rid of our rear guard, which is pretty interesting. We are playing against the X School Pate version as well. So we do ride Mandala Lord, getting a copy of Mandala Lord and Shinji Maru, and then we use a million rat skill to actually get a million rat. So we filled up our board just by counter blasting two, soul blasting one, um, and then not wasting a lot of cards from our hand as well. So pretty good. Um, our opponent does check a heal trigger and uh, guard the rest except for Musashi. So that's a thing. Um, our opponent also does go into Alfred early, uses the skill again to counter boss one, soul blast one, blow our Musashi up, and then uh, calls a Marin and a Pongol, uses both of their skills. And then attacks our vanguard for 23. We do no guard. He does get no trigger. Um, and we get no trigger as well. Uh, then our opponent attacks our vanguard again. And then our opponent attacks again uh, into our rear guard. So uh, we take the rear guard attack. Uh, we call some with Zambaku. And then we are attacking. Uh, we check the promo card and a front trigger. So pretty good. Like I said, 10k to front row. Um, could almost seal the game. I think it would have it, unless my like if my opponent didn't get that crit trigger, but he did. Um, but yeah, just that was just one of the small examples where um, a front trigger just can legit like win you the game um, just off of you checking it. But uh, my opponent then goes into Akane, doesn't choose to use the skill because I'm guessing he wants to save it for Exculpate. Um, then he attacks my rear guard. Um, and then he attacks with his other column to rearguard as well, I believe. Um, and then when he was in the middle of attacking rearguard on this game, he just left. Um, because you can see that his hand is two Exculpates, um, a PG, uh, a Kane, Wingle, and Allen, and he just wasn't going to survive an next turn. Like, I would have stood and drew, um, not even knowing what I drew, I would have just played the grade one to the Excel circle. Um, unless I got another grade 3 to ride, then I would have re rode grade 3, then done it, then played a trigger to the Excel Circle and the grade 1 to the Excel Circle, so he, didn't, he definitely couldn't survive. Um, but there was definitely at least 5 attacks coming at him, and I don't think that he could guard the 5 attacks coming at him. I think he could only effectively guard 4. Um, but with that being said, that was game 1. Let's get right into game 2. <laughs> Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, all right, yeah, so we're getting right into game two here. So game two, we played against Shadow Paladin. Um, kind of a bad matchup for us, just because of how much they make us, like, retire our cards. Uh, we also happen to start like this game with no grade one so that sucked um but yeah we started this game with no grade one so that's a thing uh then we did attack after g assisting and we did get a heal so i, I guess it evens it up a little bit but we don't want to have a majority of just triggers in our hand kind of blows um our opponent like rides a rapier uses the skill of the main call in the main and calls a rapier from hand we check a damage no trigger and then um our opponent attacks with the rear guard as well so we ride a Fushimi, call a Fushimi, we attack, we get another heal trigger, so we're definitely evened up from the, uh, the G assist now. And then we attack for 19, he's not hitting triggers, so this is really good for us. Uh, he rides Vanguard and uses uh, the skill of Dark Dictator, make us retire, and he calls Sharon. And then he calls um, the Dagger, so he is using like the retire version it seems. Kind of similar to the build uh, that I used in the Shadow Paladin Future Fight video. So we do get a uh, draw trigger and we draw. Um, and then our opponent attacks with both of his rear guards. And I think we just take both because I don't want to waste the, uh, the heals or the um, PG draws in my hand, the Sentinel triggers. So uh, we do get a draw and put power to Vanguard and draw a card. We actually drew left arrestor, which was like a godsend because we were able to just play that and then call a right arrestor out using this skill. Uh, basically, counter blast three and uh, soul blast one and put one into soul to lock down his uh, his vanguard for one turn. So we do lock him down. He PGs our vanguard. Uh, we check two, 
and we don't get anything of real value so we attack for 24 um, to Vanguard he takes it we attack with Musashi um, and then he intercepts and we attack with our final rear guard for 13 and uh, he can't ride or stand so he just decides to uh, start his turn play a blaster dart made me retire one I retired left arrester and then he called javelin uh, adding a card or sorry drawing a card to his hand but his vanguard is still stunned that's why he rests his vanguard right here so you guys can just see how kind of powerful this effect is um, even though I don't think that you know Murakumo is the end-all be-all like it's not OP as hell and should be like banned or something like that um, it's not tier, tier zero um, it definitely is a pretty solid standard deck um, but we attack for 25 uh, with our Zambaku and our opponent really just can't guard so I don't even know why he tried to with that hand um, but we check two cards um, again not anything of value uh, we do have three PGs so if he did happen to survive like there was no way that we were dying with three attacks three PGs and then he would have to get rid of a majority of uh, our rear guards too to even like hurt us bad and in order to do that he would have to get rid of his own rear guards as well so um, not much going for him in his favor um, but then again I could say not much was going for me in the very beginning I just assisted even though I double healed like come on I deserved that right like deserved half to hashtag calculated but uh, we're going into our next game here and our final game at that uh, which is going to be Murakumo game three um, so we are playing in Shadow Pot and again we draw and uh, we, or we ride and draw a card uh, he attacks us with dagger um, and we block it then we attack him with our 9k he takes it um, then he chooses to ride Maka over uh, Blaster Dark, which is actually pretty interesting. I have no idea why he did that. I thought at the time when he did that, it was because he didn't have Blaster Dark in his hand. Uh, but now I see that he did, so that's kind of awkward. Um, but we play Zombaku, who uses the skill to get a left arrester. Like I said, against Retired Clans, it doesn't really matter all that much what you decide to call and where, just because uh, if they're going to retire it, they're going to retire it. So there's no need to play something in the back row. Um, for that purpose but our opponent doesn't have a grade 3 so he just stays on grade 2 for a turn attacks us with 23 gets a draw trigger um, puts the power on blaster blade or sorry blaster dark um, uses the skill to attack us with rapier and dagger making us retire both of our rear guards um, and then we he didn't want to put us to uh, another higher damage just because he had blaster dark on the field and I guess he was being wary of our counter boss so he just chose to not attack uh, we did check a heal trigger going into Mandala Lord. Um, our opponent gets the Dark Dictator. We attack for 25. Our opponent guards with a heal. And then we attack for 29. Our opponent guards with a crit and an intercept. So uh, very, very solid. We're, we are steadily wasting cards from our opponent's hand. Uh, we do need a Zambaku kind of badly though. Uh, our opponent like uses Dark Dictator skill to call Blaster Dark, give it 5,000. And we choose one of our cards and retire it. Um, so our opponent attacks for 20, uh, 33. They hit no trigger but a draw trigger and I'm like oh my god all these draw triggers it's like insane he has 4 PGs in his hand right now. Um, and then he attacks us we guard with our heal. Uh, then we are just forced to attack vanguard because we don't get another grade 3. But we do put a heal trigger, power to rear guard and a front trigger on the power to front row. Um, and then we attack he guards one attack and then he takes one attack. He uses the skill of uh, PBD to make us retire 3. And then um, he attacks for 48, which we PG as well. Um, then he checks a crit, putting it all on the rear guard, and then uh, we guard his crit attack. Uh, then we're just forced to use Million Rat skill, get a Million Rat, and we're holding the right arrester for a uh, for guard slash a rainy day because um, we can't really use the skill and it can't really attack anything. So why uh, why waste it? Um, but. Uh, our opponent tries to use Vanguard Axe Skill of Phantom Blaster Dragon, and he cannot because I have rear guards basically. So he doesn't have that great of a hand either, so he just chooses to just attack Vanguard with without playing rear guards. I 2 to pass him, and he doesn't get the 2 to pass. Um, and then we uh, actually top deck a Musashi, so that was kind of fire. Um, and then we're able to just attack him for 18, then attack him for Musashi, which got a lot of things done as well because 
uh, he has to give me two cards for Musashi's ability. Um, so I was really lucky that he didn't check a trigger uh, when I first attacked with that 18. And then I'm attacking for 18 again, and he is guarding with a grade 0. Um, so then he draws for turn, uh, calls Maka, Maka's skill to call Javelin, draws the card, and then attacks us for 33 with PG using the Rider Esther. So it did actually come in handy. And then um, our opponent attacks our Vanguard and then uh, attacks our Rear Guard for 8. So we're able to just um, call double Benishi um, just in case he had a PG. So uh, he does PG um, our Vanguard so we're able to put two back and I was going to call two Mandala Lords but um, I believe one Mandala Lord was in my soul um, or something like that or in my drop zone so I couldn't call another one here like I wanted to. Um, but then I attack with Musashi and that actually just clears the game because he has one card in his hand He can't guard Musashi's ability um, Quite literally because he has to guard with two cards. So um, But yeah with that being said that has been the future fight Vanguard video for the Murakumo deck Hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did be sure to leave a like and a um, thumbs up on the video uh, comment down below letting me know your favorite builds for Murakumo slash what you think of the deck. Is this deck terrorizing your locals or pillaging your village? Let me know. <laughs> um, and uh, if you haven't already, like I said at the very beginning of the video, check out Gabbers at the end of this video. And I'll see you guys on the next one on Friday. Peace, guys.